Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is John Nossel with Fabric Cafe. I hope you all enjoyed our little teaser that we did this morning with little Yuna. Uh, it was one of those great mornings we were sitting around having coffee and she's just sitting there and just cooing and looking at me. And I'm going like, oh, we got to have some fun with this. So I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't seen it, uh, go check it out in the feed below here and uh, check it out. It's really a lot of fun. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Civil War uh, fabrics. Uh, oh, forgot one other housekeeping thing. I wanted just to send out uh, a big thank you to everybody for all the emails and the messages on Facebook and the condolences and everything that y'all sent out for Grandma and uh, Donna sends her greetings and uh, appreciation for all of the outpouring of love and, and everything that y'all have done. Uh, and uh, one other thing, we just got notice uh, from uh, Quilt Festival that uh, takes place down in Houston, Texas. Both Quilt Festival and Quilt Market have been canceled for 2020. So uh, it looks like that uh, pretty much our year of 2020 is going to be quilt showless. So uh, that's why these quilt, virtual quilt shows are going to be so much better for us. So uh, anyway, let's get back to Civil War fabrics. So uh, kind of got me thinking a little bit about what exactly are Civil War fabrics? What falls into that category? So you know, I went out and do what all of us, you know, computer guys do. Went out and Googled it. So. Uh, but then I did print it, so uh, I found this great article uh, by Margot uh, Krager, uh, and she was talking about uh, historic, historians often think of Civil War era as the years between 1850 and 1888. Uh, the American Civil War was actually between April of 1861 and concluded by April of 1865. So. The dramatic growth in the British textile industry in the early 19th century fueled the demand for cotton, and that became quickly the biggest export here in the United States. Uh, they were doing like, uh, in 1846, they were doing three and a half million yards. By 1856, it had grown up to 97 million yards. That's a lot of fabric. Uh, and uh, so it was all, printed and dyed and all of that here in the United States. It was really, really big business. So the fabrics of the Civil War area, the dye colors were indigo blue, uh, shades of red, dull lavenders, and mini browns. So that's where a lot of those uh, fabric colors, and that's what a lot of our kits are gonna be looking at today. We're using those colors, and even some of these are reproductions of some of the Civil War areas. Uh, the print styles were a Fowlard style prints in geometrics, florals, plaids, uh, and all of those different things. So it was a lot of really neat uh, variety and it was just really changing up the way the whole textile industry was working at that time frame. So let's get in here and uh, let's start looking at some things. Well, you know, in the Civil War era, uh, they weren't using uh, sewing machines to make their quilts. They were doing, you know, hand quilting where they were going in and doing all of that stitching and everything. Well, I wanted to share with y'all one of the cool things that we've got on our website. We've got these binding needles that we uh, ran across uh, a couple of years ago. And if you're not familiar with these binding needles, they're a little bit longer than a standard quilting needle. And the nice thing is, is they're a little bit flexible. So you're able to really get in there and do some great things with that. Um, it's uh, probably about, oh, I don't know, three eighths of an inch longer than uh, a standard quilting needle. Uh, but it works really, really great for that. And when we're doing all of our hand binding, we like doing hand binding on our quilts uh, when we're doing that economy binding. Uh, these work just beautiful for doing that. So we've got those available on our website. They come in, in uh, uh, little tubes of 12 and they're just $6. So that's a great thing. And of course, you know, modern technology's also gotten in there. And you'll notice that I've got this great uh, thimble on my finger here. We've got these on our website too, and they come in three different sizes. We've got a small, medium, which I've got on my finger here, and large. They're silicone, so they really hold onto your finger nicely. Uh, if you've ever seen one of Donna's presentations at one of the shows, uh, you've seen her, and she's got one of these on here, and she's gesturing with her hand, and, and I'm sure you've all had a situation where you're sitting around in a quilting bee and you're talking and you've got that thimble on your finger and you gesture and your thimble flies across the room. These are gonna stay there. They're really great because you've got that end that you can push through some thicker fabric and you've got that silicone there that works really great to be able to pull through some of those tight spots. So the clover thimbles that we've got are $9.99 on our website. Uh, check those out. So these are just some of the, uh, the tools that we've modernized a little bit from 
uh, those bygone days when we were doing quilting. So let's take a look at some of our uh, quilts that, quilt kits that we have today. Uh, so if you're not familiar with our kits, which I know a lot of you ladies are, uh, and even a few gentlemen that are tuning in and watching us, uh, you know that all of our uh, kits are made up of three yards of fabric. So that's three one yard cuts of fabric and any fabric combination will work with any of our patterns. So if you don't necessarily like some of the Civil War uh, era fabrics that we're using today, you can go in and put batiks in these uh, or even just solids. So you can do some, uh, a lot of nice variety within those. Uh, all of our patterns, we either have individual patterns or we've also got uh, nine different books now. Uh, all of them are based on three yards of fabric. These are great. You get one free pattern with each one of the kits that you buy. And or we've also got a great deal called our book deal on our website. So when you're going in and selecting your individual patterns and we're requiring you to select either the pattern or you're going to have an option there for write your choice in or there's also the book deal. So with the book deal, you just select that when you're selecting or purchasing three different kits and they don't all have to be the same. So you can, you know, select three different kits and select all of them as doing the book deal. And then in the order comments, when you get down to the checkout, you'll write in which one of the books you want for free. So it can be quick as a, a wink, uh, easy does it, any one of the books that we have. And you can even do one of our downloadable books, which is our uh, three yard quilt favorites and quick and easy three yard quilts. So all of those are great for being able to give you what you need. And I will mention the books also make great gifts for your uh, quilting uh, group uh, and or even if you're doing a lot of the charity quilts, this is a great way to use up a lot of your stash and be able to do that. Oh, and speaking of charity quilts, have you been out to uh, freecharityquiltpatterns.com lately? It's another website that we're doing where you can actually go up and download free patterns to use for making charity quilts. So be sure to check that out. Okay, let's look at our first kit here. If I can pick it up, there we go. So this is definitely something that's gonna be in those Civil War colors with those really uh, great tans and the blacks and all of that are in here. This particular one is called Briar Rose. And let's take a look at the pattern that we're suggesting with this one. We're suggesting Picture Perfect. So you can see that uh, we've got that nice big focus fabric in here and then our, our secondary and uh, tertiary fabric and it works out really great in the picture perfect quilt. So uh, let's go ahead and lay this one up on the table if you don't mind, Hannah. We're gonna do the Donna thing here and, and look at each of these. So you can imagine with this, uh, we could come in here and we can lay out that in here and then number two is gonna be in the smaller box up here. You getting all of that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then we'll have that in here. So you can see that this would be a really pretty combination of those fabrics in this. So you've got that nice big floral as your focus fabric. Your number two fabric is that nice, uh, really delicate little flower with a, almost like a, uh, a grass uh, style in it. And then this really nice tan weave. So again, this one is called Briar Rose. Here's the product number if you want to search for that on our website. And again, we're suggesting Picture Perfect. And this pattern is also available in quick and easy three yard quilts. And that's what the Picture Perfect quilt looks like. Okay. Thank you. And I know that uh, we had a number of different large print flower fabrics over the last couple of months and y'all really liked those. Here's another one. Uh, with this gorgeous blues and browns that's in this one. We're all calling this one Sincerely Yours because uh, we've got a secondary fabric that's got some nice handwriting in it. And it's actually kind of fun to see what they said in that handwriting. So let's take a look at the suggested, uh, nope, it's the same one that we had just a second ago. So we're, we're uh, again suggesting the picture perfect quilt on this. I need to read my cues on my little pieces of paper here. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, so let's flip through these a little bit more. I think this is really, I'm a, I'm a handwriting uh, uh, fan. I love to write with fountain pens and all of that. And I just love any kind of a fabrics that have that handwriting on them. 
Uh, in fact, in my office, I have a, a quilt that has fountain pens all over it uh, as part of my office uh, decorations. And then this really neat uh, brown, I think this really looks like something that would be uh, definitely that Civil War era. And of course, everybody was handwriting everything. It's fun to look back through historical documents and see that how they were handwriting everything back then. Uh, so again, this one is, is called Sincerely Yours. Uh, it's, we suggest using the picture perfect. And oh, by the way, this is also one of our last chances. Uh, so there's just one of these up on our website, so hurry. But hey, don't leave the show yet. Stay here, and, uh, but immediately after the show, go up there and grab that if you're liking this one. Uh, so that is Sincerely Yours. And by the way, those last chances, the easy way to get to those is up in the top left-hand corner. Go up and select the three-yard quilt kits, and one of the options under that menu is going to be Last Chance, and it'll show you the Last Chance quilts that we have available. So here's another one that is a new version of the Jamestown quilt. Uh, a very, very much Civil War style in these with the small little prints in it and the tans and kind of that uh, olive green that's in here and the small floral print in that. Uh, we're actually suggesting using uh, Heartland on this one. And I would say that this is very much a Civil War style uh, uh, design on this particular pattern. So you see we've got our, our main focus fabric in here. We've got our number two fabric that's here in the background and then this darker flower is just gorgeous how it pops out of this design. And of course we got our focus fabric out on the borders on this one uh, which gives you even more really nice design. I love how uh, Donna has worked this into the design to where we have these boxes up in the corner uh, kind of offset in those corners and adding just a little bit extra design and interest to those. What kind of the uh, background do we got on this? Oh, let's take a look at this backing. This is kind of a neat one. Uh, again, this could, you could very easily see this being done back in the 1800s and, and the ladies sitting around on the, the, the uh, yep, you're catching me here. I don't know what the name of it is. Quilting rack, there we go. Uh, you know, sitting there doing all of those stitches and, uh, it, and by the way, yeah, I'll, I'll share this with the girls in the uh, office here with me. You know, when they were hand stitching the quilting on these things, they were doing like 10 and 12 stitches to the inch. Yeah, so they were just, and they were fast. They were like machines. It was, it was phenomenal to watch that. I've tried it once. It drove me crazy. I enjoy doing the binding by hand, but not doing all of the quilting on it. So let's take a look at these fabrics up a little bit closer here. So that's our main focus fabric. I think this is a really neat design. And then we've got this little floral look on this. So it's kind of a two-tone. We've got a, an olive and a darker gray there. And then that nice black floral pattern. Again, another really nice example of some reproductions that very well could have been done back in the Civil War era. So this one's called Jamestown II, and we're suggesting the Heartland pattern. And by the way, Heartland is out of our Pretty Darn Quick book. So that's our uh, last book that we did, la not last book, the book that we did last fall uh, prior to going to the 2019 Houston Quilt Festival. Okay, Petite Posies. I could totally see this in a reproduction, uh, uh, you know, a Civil War reproduction act thing, you know, the guys walking around wearing, you know, a shirt made out of this or something like that. Uh, pretty neat stuff. So this one's called Petite Posies, and we're suggesting, uh, again, the Heartland. Here's another example of Heartland uh, in, you know, kind of that tone-on-tone -tone look uh, with floral and, and all of the smaller designs. I think this is another great example of, of how different the quilts look uh, whenever we're going in and using different fabrics in them. What do you think? Should we hold those up side by side? Let's do that. That way you can see them side by side. See, I'm just like Donna with doing all this. <laughs> yeah, can you get all that in there, Natalie? Perfect. So you can see that they're really uh, a nice variety of looks and feels that you can get with it. And remember with our three yard kits, you can put your fabrics in any one of the positions to give you a diff different look but you have to follow the instructions and use that one fabric for everything in that quilt top or for that particular position. So you've got three different positions and um, 
so you're able to mix and match those up a little bit. So let's take a look at this fabric a little bit closer on the petite posies. So we've got this great flower with the ba gray background in it. And then the second one. And then the third. So know what the kind of the rule of thumb that we use whenever we're, we're laying these fabrics out. We'll have a light medium and a dark. You know, generally that medium is going to be our main focus fabric. It's the one that you're wanting to highlight most. Your lightest fabric is going to be that number two fabric, and your darkest is going to be that number three. And again, this is Petite Posies, and we're suggesting the Heartland pattern once again. Okay, so our next one coming up. I love this one. Love the name that you put on it, Virginia Reel. This is great. So Virginia Reel, uh, very much I could see this as being uh, something from that, that era. So Virginia Reel, again, we're suggesting Heartland. And uh, it's the same pattern, we just, or the same quilts that we just look at. So let's take a look at the in, these individual patterns here. Really neat with a tone on tone, little butterfly pattern on that. And then this really cool geometric, uh, which is definitely one of the styles that they were using in that time frame. So Virginia Reel, and again, we're suggesting using the Heartland. Okay. So next up, we have Dusty Rose. Another really nice big floral print on this. And uh, with the grays and the blues and the browns, we're calling this one the Dusty Rose. And we're suggesting the 9 plus 1. So let's take a look at that quilt. I really think this is a fun quilt, especially if you're new into quilting, because you've got that nice big 10 inch block here for your main focus fabric. So in this situation, that, that rose fabric there, and then we've got a real basic four patch in that particular motif. So you've got two motifs that you're building in this. And again, whenever you're working with our, our patterns, we're always using a strip method. So we're going to come in here and say, okay, we're going to cut a strip that's, you know, five inches uh, wide with the fabric. We're going to sew it together with another one that's five inches wide with the fabric. Sew them together, cut them up into your blocks, rotate them appropriately, sew them together again, and the next thing you know, you've got your, quilt, your entire quilt top made up. And our quilt tops are really great because most people can actually finish one of these in about five or six hours uh, from start to finish the entire quilt top. And the kit does include your border and your binding in this. So that's everything you see on that quilt top is going to be part of the kit. And then on the back, all you need is that three yards of additional fabric. Okay, let's take a look at this one a little bit closer. So we've got those great flowers in there. And you can see quite a bit of variety. Let's open this one up a little bit more. There we go. I'm making you work for it there, Natalie. <laughs> So that's a really pretty, it's actually this really nice vertical vine pattern on this. So that would work great in that so quick. And if you kind of thought about it a little bit more, whenever you're dry fitting your, your 10 inch blocks, you could actually get that vine to run up your, your uh, quilt. That might be kind of a cool thing that you could do. Uh, I'll do that whenever I'm putting together some of my design, uh, quilts, whenever I'm building them, uh, we'll have the, the motif flow through it and then our second number two fabric here is this really nice geometric, and then that gorgeous blue. Uh, again, hey, how to make a bow tie out of that. <laughs> so uh, this one again is called Dusty Rose, and we're suggesting the nine plus one, and nine plus one is also in the uh, Quilts for Kids. So if you have that book, you could always do the, I'll write my, uh, selection in on uh, which pattern that you would like. We've got over 50 different individual patterns to choose from, so there's a lot of variety with those. Okay. Our next one is called Daisy Chain. And this one is really fun with those nice, rich, dark colors on that main focus fabric. And we're suggesting to use uh, Friendship Star in this one. So let's take a look at the Friendship Star pattern. And this is a great one from the Civil War era, because again, because we've got some great lettering on it. And you can imagine, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, fonts that you see in these pictures are 
were actually done by hand back in that time frame, and it's just a, truly an art form whenever you get into the penmanship and all of that. So a grin, we got a great little uh, star pattern in there with those half square triangles. Great little project if you're wanting to get started on using half square triangles. Uh, fairly easy one because again, we're doing this all in strip method for you when we're doing the instructions and that nice 10 inch block for that. Very nice. Anything interesting on the back? Oh, this is a kind of a neat one on the back. So that's a great little floral design that we that our quilter did for us. Okay, let's look at that fabric. So we got our daisies on that as our number one fabric, and then this kind of a web looking tan fabric on number two, and this fun little almost a floor de lis design on number three. Really a nice one. So those are the three fabrics inside of the daisy chain kit. And again, we're suggesting the Friendship Star. And Friendship Star, is that really in quick and easy? Uh, 15, eh, it might be. I'm not sure if that book name is right. Oh, it is right, okay. We've done the official test and looked at our inventory or my pattern uh, collection sheet and it's on there, so it must be right, right? <laughs> okay, now we're gonna get into some greens here or mints. Uh, I will mention that if you're looking at this photo photograph of this kit online, it's a little muddy there, it's definitely a really nice mint green on here. Uh, in that Civil War era color, it's a little bit more subdued, but it's really a nice green. And we're calling this kit Mint Waltz, and we're suggesting the hopscotch pattern. And I could see hopscotch would definitely be one of those that you could see how they're using it uh, back in that era just to use up scraps of fabric because you've got all these little bits and pieces But we've made it easy because we're actually using that strip method again So we're going in and cutting three strips with the fabric sewing them together Cutting them up and then using them throughout the project. So it's a really nice uh, thing uh, In how easily they go together. So again really nice fabrics in this one uh, This particular kit is not available on our website, but let's take a look at mint waltz which is available. So this is a really nice little paisley design in this one, uh, in our number one fabric. Our number two fabric is a nice little simple dot pattern. And then number three is a great little floral vine on this. And so these three are making up the mint waltz kit. And this is what the hopscotch pattern looks like. Okay, our next one even has where one of the big battles took place in its name, Gettysburg. So this is the Gettysburg uh, kit, and we are suggesting the nine patch with this one. So if you're familiar with that nine patch, it's, uh, this will work out really nice with that. So let's take a look at this one. So we've got two different alternating blocks that we're using within. We've got the lighter nine patch in this one and the darker one in this one. And it's able to give you some nice variety. You get a lot of variety in the, the di diagonal lines that it's creating really nice pleasing uh, look with this real simple nice patch, nine patch with that nice big border out there on the side. So let's take a look at the fabric and take a look at this Gettysburg kit. So that first fabric, is that nice little paisley and again another great little geometric that I could see as being a, a fabric of that era and then definitely a little fleur de lis on the number three fabric and those are the three fabrics from Gettysburg and again nine patch is what we're suggesting with this one and it is in the Three Yard Quilt Favorites, one of our downloadable books. It's no longer in print at this time. Okay. 
Village Garden. I love this one. It's so fun and friendly looking. So Village Garden uh, is one that we're going to suggest that you make up in stepping stones. And let's take a look at that kit or that quilt. So stepping stones has been a really popular one for us. If, you've, if you're out on Pinterest, you'll probably see this all over the place. Uh, it's been pinned, we've lost track of how we were able to see the numbers. They started hiding those numbers from us. It was well over 200,000 pins uh, on uh, Pinterest of how many people uh, pinned it, liked it, and added it to their things that they liked in quilting. Uh, so you've got a nice big, uh, I think it's an eight and a half inch block that you have here, and then your nice motif with the alternating sizes of squares. So this is a really fun uh, design. This is actually the, the of Donna's kits, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Of course, you know, I did the guy thing. I think mine was made out of motorcycle fabric or something like that. But uh, it's another nice one. It's got a, a nice big border on it with the boxes in the corners, so it gives you some really nice uh, variety to that. And if you can see the, the quilting on the side over here, they're actually using a nice little variegated thread on it. I really like variegated threads uh, when you're doing quilting. It adds even a little bit more depth and variety to uh, the project that you're working with. So if you've got a, uh, someone out there in your group that's got that long arm, you might say, hey, you got any variegated thread for your project? <laughs> so let's take a look at the Village Garden uh, fabric today. So again, we've got that really nice blue, and we've got the rust and the tur uh, yeah, turquoise that are in that. And then we've got this nice rusty color. And then another example of the vines on that number three fabric. So a good question would be, how do I know which one of these two fabrics is the darkest? Well, Donna says, hey, squint at it. Whichever one looks darkest when you do that, that's the one you can see. I just saw Natalie squinting at her phone as she's recording this, going like, yep, that one's the darkest. <laughs> yes. So that's how we do it, because this is the one that's going to give you the most depth whenever you're doing your design, that darkest fabric. So it works out really nice for working with our three yard quilt patterns. So Village Garden once again, and we're suggesting that stepping stone pattern, or if you've got the pretty darn quick book, you've got that there, so you could do that right in of one of our different patterns. Oh, this next one that's coming up has been a really popular one for us, Rustic Rose. We've really had a lot of great uh, big floral prints come through and available to us. I think this yellow rose is just really nice, you know. Plus, we're in Texas, and you know, Texas is known for its roses. In fact, Tyler is the rose capital of Texas, I believe, or is it the nation? I'm not sure. We just live here, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, we got the Yellow Rose of Texas here, folks, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's a really nice one, and we've actually got this one made up, and we can take a look at that. So you can see that it's just an absolutely stunning quilt with all of those nice yellows and the browns just really popping out, and it is uh, another beautiful example of working with stepping stones. And you can see the contrast of uh, how offsetting and going with a lighter color in the side. If uh, Natalie, kind of swing around here, down here on the bottom so that we can see these two together. Uh, so you can kind of see how, we're totally mixing it up here today. <laughs> so you can see how you get a really nice contrast in, in working in those together. So you can see that just moving your fabrics around can really add a lot of interest to the design that you're working with. Okay, let's look at that fabric up close now. So we've got that yellow rose, and then we have another great little, uh, almost a little daisy with some leaf in it, and a tone on tone tans and browns, and then this one, another fun little fabric. And this is the rustic rose, and again we're suggesting that stepping stones. Uh, is a great option for working with this one. And then up next, I was doing demolition on a house one time, and I think it had this wallpaper on it. <laughs> so uh, 
Another really interesting pattern in this one, and a great, you know, kind of that tone on tone in the background with these really great vintage looking flowers. Uh, we're calling this one Country Home, and we are suggesting the Stepping Stones pattern with this one also, and this happens to be one of our last chances, but we've got four of these left, uh, and we put them up in our last chance category, so let's take a look at these a little closer on those fabrics. So we got that great floral print as our number one. Our number two is that tan with a little brown, almost a little bow tie pattern there. And I don't even want to begin to say what this one is, but you don't want to stare at it too long. Woo! <laughs> and then we're talking, this is the Country Home uh, kit, and again we're suggesting stepping stones. And up next, we've got one that we're calling Jasper. And this is a great green and, and dark blue that we've got in these three fabrics. And we are suggesting the uh, stepping stones. But we've also got some, uh, we want to show you another one of the patterns from Fast and Fun called Urban Chic. And so this is Urban Chic. So it's kind of got a little bit of the feel of stepping stones, but it gets, has a different block pattern on it. So we've got a nice big block running through here. And uh, so you've got a four patch in here as one of your motifs. And then you've got a second motif over here that's got sashing and small boxes in the corner with a large block for your focus fabric in that. So this is a really uh, neat design. I'm trying to remember, do we have that fabric still? I don't think we do. Uh, Okay, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> so let's look at, the, at this kit. Yeah. So uh, Jasper, uh, really neat with the vertical lines on, on, on this, uh, this one. So we would actually be able to go in and put in some nice interest on that. And one of the nice things about that Urban Chic pattern, bring that up here real quick, uh, is, is your focus fabric, whenever you go in here and use that on uh, as your focus fabric, you're going to have those lines out here on the border, so you'll have your stripes going out on the sides. Uh, so it, it'll actually look really nice in here. So this is a great option for doing that. Uh, and then, thank you. Uh, and then our number two fabric is this nice uh, tone on tone with the nice vine pattern there. And then our number three fabric, I think will really cause this uh, design to pop nicely uh, within the design. So again, this one is called Jasper, and if you have the Fast and Fun book, we we showed you the example there that's made up in Urban Chic, or again, we'll suggest using the Stepping Stones pattern. Got a, quite a few Stepping Stones today. It's a really popular pattern for us. And we've got just a couple more here. This is another really nice one. If you've been watching our shows for uh, a while now, you've seen this one uh, once before, and it's called Windy Hill, and uh, it's great, a red, white, and blue combination on this one, and we've actually got this one made up in one of our models, and we've got it made up using It's a Snap. This is a great one because it looks like it has those cascading squares in it. Looks like it's a really complicated design, but it's really a simple thing because again we've gone in and you've got your motifs here so we've created those boxes here so you've got two uh, squares here and a large rectangle here and you're doing the same thing here and your rectangle two squares and a rectangle so it goes together and looks really impressive whenever you get it up and see it with that one big block here it looks like you've gone and done a lot of really uh, neat techniques or and more uh, advanced techniques on putting something like this together. So that's our It's a Snap pattern. So let's look at these fabrics a little bit closer here. So we've got that blue with the little red flower on it. It's a really nice design and this is one of uh, Donna's fabrics from uh, QT that she curated with them. It's this great little vine from the uh, Circle of Friends uh, product line. And then we got that great red with the little circle design on it. So this one is called Windy Hill. 
and we're suggesting that it's a snap pattern. Perfect. And now we've got some of our last chance uh, kits for today. We hope you all are liking these last chances. Uh, it's given us the opportunity to uh, put some that we don't have a lot of up there and uh, given you the chance to see some other things that you might normally have seen at one of the shows. Uh, but this uh, particular last chance is called Front Porch. And it's got this great rose in here and these flowers. And then our secondary is this nice little Florida Lee on that green. And then another nice botanical print here. So this one is called Front Porch. And it's one of our last chance kits. We've got three of these. So you could grab two of them and make a nice twin size with that. And so that works out really nice. And last but not least, we've got Blushing Meadow. And again, another really fun, uh, fun design with these little meadow flowers and then we've got these two paisley prints that would be great to use with your secondary flowers or secondary fabrics Woo. and this is a one left so we're suggesting using sugar pie with this one and i think sugar pie is a really neat design with the sashing that we have around the boxes. You've actually got double sashing around your main focus fabric and some little one inch blocks in there. It goes together really, really quick. Again, it's using a strip method, so you're not cutting a little one inch block and trying to sew it together with another one inch block. Uh, so it's, it goes together really nicely. So uh, just as a reminder, uh, we do have multiple books out there and you can get that book deal uh, by going in and just selecting the book deal. When you buy three kits, you can get one of the books for free. You do not need to add it to your cart. Uh, there's been a little bit of confusion, confusion with that, uh, but you just write it into the comment area when you're checking out and said, hey, I want the, you know, the quick as a wink book whenever I've purchased these three kits and we'll get that taken care of for you. Uh, I'll also mention that all of the, the books do have the instructions in here for making it bigger. So it does have the instructions for making a twin out of two of our kits or a queen king topper out of four of our kits. So you're able to put all of that together. And all of the books do have eight different patterns in them. So you've got eight different designs that you can choose from and some really nice variety. So you can go up to our website at fabriccafe.com and see all of the, the pictures and all of that up close to see which one of those that you like. So uh, that gives you a little bit idea of some of the fabrics that we have online that are kind of in that Civil War era. And we hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, thanks everybody for all the love and support. And we look forward to seeing you next time. This is John Nossel with Fabric Cafe.